Hi, my name is Matt Duff. I'm an application engineer covering precision amplifiers, specifically instrumentation amplifiers. And today we're going to cover the input range of an instrumentation amplifier. So what I've drawn here on the board is a typical 3 op amp instrumentation amplifier circuit. So you can see here it's composed of two different stages. The first is the gain stage and the whole purpose of the gain stage is to amplify the signal. It does not remove any common mode of the input signal. The second stage is the difference amplifier stage and its purpose typically is not to apl apply any gain but just to remove the common mode signal. Now the 3 op amp architecture is the most popular on the market today and the reason for this is because it has a lot of nice qualities. Because we do the gain first and only the gain first, uh, <clears throat> we can gain up the signal and then any other work which might add extra non-idealities, uh, noise and so forth is applied to the signal that has already been gained. So because we have a symmetric front end that applies gain, we get very nice common mode rejection, we get nice common mode rejection versus frequency, and we get nice noise performance. And all <clears throat> these properties make this type of amplifier very popular. But one drawback of this type of amplifier is that the ability to gain a signal when it's near the voltage rails is limited. So we're going to discuss why that is. So what I've done is I've drawn our amplifier and I'm going to say we're going to run it off of a single 5 volts. So I've got 0 volts for my negative supply, 5 volts for the positive. I've also made my reference voltage 0 volts. You can recall that the reference voltage is where your output is referred to. And so if I have 0 volts on my inputs, I should get 0 volts at my output. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a voltage at the inputs. So I'm going to put 1 volt at my input, positive input, and zero volt at my negative input. So I have a one volt differential signal, and I have a 0.5 volt common mode signal. So the average of these two signals is 0.5, and we'll have to remember this because this will be useful to remember. Okay, so now these signals go through my first stage. So I gain up, so here, I should have a differential voltage of 4 volts, so 4 times my 1 in the inputs, but I should still have a common mode voltage of 0.5 volts. So if I look at what that turns out to be in terms of voltages, that ends up being negative 1.5 volts here and 2.5 volts here. And that is the problem. So the problem is, I've got this negative 1.5, but I'm running off of a 0 volt single supply. And even if I use rail-to-rail -rail op amps here, there's no way that it's going to get below the rail. So what's going to happen is instead of doing negative 1.5, the part's only going to do 0 volts. Let me draw this. Sorry, I got my numbers mixed up here. Here is going to do 0 volts, and here is still going to do 2.5. So now, when I go through my different amplifier stage, instead of getting the 4 volts out at my output that I want, I'm going to get 2.5 volts out at my output. So 2.5 volts, not what we want. So what do we do? Well, there's a couple things we can do to solve this issue. One is that we can move our common mode range closer to the center of the part. And this is one reason that for strain gauges or for anything that uses a Wheatstone bridge, N amps are perfect because the Wheatstone bridge tends to put your common mode signal right smack in the center of the part. So that's one thing you can do is try to move your common mode signal closer to the center. The other thing that you can do is you can lower your gain. You can notice that if we were using perfect rail-to-rail -rail op amps here and I had a gain of 1, then we would not have seen our issue. So this 0 volt would have passed through, this 1 volt would have gone through, and we would have gotten 1 volt at the output just like what we want with a gain of 1. Uh, so those are your two options. Reduce the gain or change your common mode. So this presentation, what we covered was the input range of a typical 3 op-amp instrumentation amplifier 
and why it has some difficulties trying to amplify a signal when it's very close to the input rails.